Hey guys and gals, how we doing? It's me, Joe Sires, back here from the Music Factory Studios. So I've been working on something that I wanted to show you guys, and I know there are a lot of people who are interested in something like this, and it's it's pretty cool what you can do when you're looking to make a nice all digital mixing system or tracking system but with all of the workflows of analog i don't mean what i don't mean here is splattering analog plugins all over your mix or something what i'm talking about here is being able to mix just the same way as you would if you were on a desk except your desk now becomes logic pro and there's a few things that you might need and a few things that you may have thought about wanting that i'm going to show you how to do a lot cheaper okay so as you can see we're in logic i've got this generic project of loops here that i've made that's it's not important what it sounds like at all it's just here for looks basically but as you can see in the video playing now i'm using touch on a macbook now i'm not using the macbook screen i'm using an external screen and i'm sure many of you have thought about getting a slate raven or the i think it's called the mti and using one of those as your you know mixing console well i didn't want to spend a thousand dollars to see if i wanted to do mixing with touch i already have an ipad pro the 12.9 inch and it's great and as you can see logic remote is a cool app if you just want to eq but if you're wanting to use other plugins it's not so great okay the interface is just kind of wonky. It gives you this MIDI OSC controller, OCS, whatever it's called, control for that, for each plugin, except for the basically the Logic EQ and some of the built-in Logic instruments. But if you wanted to use, say, a third-party plugin, like this Valhalla plugin, you're just kind of out of luck because you end up with those midi style controls in logic remote but what if you could touch the screen well i'm here to tell you that you can there is a monitor on the market that is relatively inexpensive that works with a mac and has a free driver so you don't have to spend the money for the 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 monitor the, an extra i think it's 125 dollars for the driver if you buy the driver direct well come to find out this monitor it's an asus vt229 and the asus asus vt229 uses the cool r touch system and there is a free cool r touch driver as you can see here we'll open it it's the updd now if you have any other touch screen laying around they will sell you a driver made specifically for your touchscreen but this touchscreen is super inexpensive it's 21.5 inches and it's only 199 dollars and it works great with mac os i like touch i like the ipad pro for its touch capabilities i'm using touch now as i'm scrolling through this launch pad and it just makes things easier and it uses the updd touch driver what's great about it is if you're using something like logic pro as you can see that little circle popped up there on launchpad that's basically like a, a right click you can click on your your options here your applications folder if you have that or your utilities folder any of your apps it works with window dragging you can drag windows around and it just it works like it's supposed to i like that that's really handy but what i like most is being able to just pull up the logic eq and get to work i'm using touch as we speak see you don't see the the cursor on the screen now if i use the mouse 
you'll see the cursor here or the uh, arrow right here. I'll make it. I think I don't know if it, it makes it bigger when I shake it on a recording or not, but I have it set up that way on the Mac in accessibilities. But I'm able to use touch as you see the cursor disappear again or the mouse disappear. I'm using it as touch. Now, I'm not sure how that's going to come across on a screen recording. We still might be seeing the arrow, but I don't see it because I have it turned off in the options for the cool R touch UPDD driver. So in my settings, I have the, the touch behavior. I have the hide the mouse cursor during touches, which is pretty cool. So we can test it out here with uh, drawing on the screen here. This is the ASUS VT229. Ugh. I have bad handwriting there. It's great. This is not a, uh, a Hackintosh in any way. This is a MacBook Pro. And it just works really well. I was surprised it would work. I've had this monitor since. Oh, I want to say March or April of 2020. And I knew I could buy the driver, but... I had someone tell me, hey, man, I've got the same monitor. It works with Mac OS, but you can use the driver that is for the Coolar Touch system, and it's free. After they told me that, they sent me an email. Well, I lost the email. I mean, Well, it got buried under a thousand other emails, <laughs> and I forgot to save it to a uh, special folder to go back. So I finally found it, sent an email back. I was like, show me where that driver's at. And uh, as you can see, I'll show you here on the screen where the driver is. So it it's able to use multi-touch and you can configure it however you want it, which is really, really nice. You can go in here and change it for all applications, all kinds of things. Press and tap, two finger pinch, the zoom, swipes, fix things in web browsers how the dock behaves. I mean, it's it's pretty awesome. And anybody that says Mac OS is not great with touch is just, I'm sorry. It makes Mac OS even better than I've ever thought it would be. And I'm, I've been a Mac OS fan for a long time. I like Unix. I like this Aqua desktop environment. I like everything about Mac OS. It's pretty configurable too is what I like about it. You know, I can do all the work I need to do faster. That's the main thing. I can touch faders. I can move faders on the screen. That's just amazing. I can also, you know, work with plugins such as like a compressor. I can pull up the compressor, have compressor settings, you know, and then change them, you know, as I see fit. But the real issue is EQing in the digital domain is not, not fun with a mouse. Because using a mouse causes you to do weird things. And I don't know if it's OCD of engineers or what the, what the deal is. Nothing against anyone with OCD, but I, I notice a lot of guys will be like, they'll get to 1.8 and it'll sound good. And they'll be like, well, I need to make it 2.0. <laughs> it's like what are you doing <laughs> well it's an even number I, I mean you you would be surprised how many people do little things like that and that doesn't seem like it's a big deal but if you do it over a mix of 100 tracks it can throw your whole mix out of whack from where you initially wanted to hear your mix okay things like that it works with third-party plugins as well really really well so like one of the most popular plugins the pro q3 Pro Q3 is just a great EQ. But you can you can use the knobs or you can literally grab it and move it with your finger as you see fit. That's just so nice. You can even make it full screen, work that way, doing your EQ work, put in a high pass, low pass bells, shelves, whatever you want. 
whatever you want to do and it works it's so awesome and nothing against slate i would love to have one of the slate mtis the ravens and i understand there are a lot of new engineers nothing against steven slate no hate but if you've got a young guy who's learning mixing and uh tracking or a young gal and they want to be able to, to have touch on mac os since that is the the default platform for you know 90 percent of studios this might be the best option for super tight budget coming up engineers and then once you've made enough money that you can afford to get something like a raven get it because there's so much more to a raven than just a touch screen i mean there's the whole overlay interface that goes along with it that makes it easier to mix and touch and and, and work with different plugins and, and things of that nature it's just great but this is the asus vt229 and it is a 1080p 21 and a half inch it has a vase mount, so you could put it on a stand or here's what i personally want to do i want to mount it in my desk flat so cut out a spot in my desk and mount it flat so that way it's it just feels more normal that way I think this monitor is meant to be like a, uh, a cash register kind of monitor. That's its whole premise, but it looks good. It works. And I now have basically a baby controller. It's 21 and a half inches. I don't have to program the controller. I don't have to go through logic and set up an external controller or control surface it just works and that's wonderful if you enjoyed this video or this helped you in any way please subscribe and give a thumbs up that helps the channel a lot and that's the best thing you can do to help us out here also since you're already here on youtube check out one of these other videos here on the screen now and uh check out the rest of the channel all right, guys and gals, we'll see you next time. Have a great day, y'all.